So in this video, we want to look at constructing confidence intervals. And to give an intuitive idea, let's just look at an example here. So suppose you live in a town and you're lucky because the commutes have gotten shorter. Maybe there's better public transportation. Something's happened. Now, the political savvy mayor says, aha, I'm going to use this in my upcoming uh, advertisements because that should help me get reelected. So the mayor calls you, her statistical friend, and says, what is the average commute in our city? And you say, I'll get back to you, mayor, because I don't know. Well, obviously we can't interview every single person in the city, so what do we do? We go out and we collect a sample, right? We collect a sample, and notice in this case I've collected a sample of 32 people, and I said, excuse me, what is your commute? Now, 32 is no accident, right? Because once we hit that magic number of 30 or above, that's when we're getting into the realm of where we can apply the central limit theorem safely, and we can start using things, uh, the information related to normal distributions. So 32 is no accident. So, okay, I've got my, my commute times. Suppose in the past that this had been done as well, this, this, this experiment, and suppose we know that the, the standard deviation is equal to 15. So a standard deviation of 15 minutes in regards to commute times. So suppose I call up the mayor and I say, hey, mayor, I got some information for you. And I say, I am 90% confident. Say, I, I don't know for sure, but I'm 90% sure that the true average commute time falls in this interval of 34.26 minutes up to 43.08 minutes. And she said, oh, I've changed my mind. I need to be even more sure. You know, what if I want to be 99% sure I've got the true, the true commute time? And I say, well, okay, I'll call you back. How do we answer these questions? How did I give that first interval to the mayor? What did I do? Well, let's look at that. Okay, one thing I want to point out, we're never positive that we know the true, that we know the true average commute time. We can only be confident up to a certain amount, and we get to specify that amount. You know, if you need to be real sure, well, then you would use, you know, you would want to be 99% confident. Maybe if it's not so important, eh, 90% confidence works. Okay, so here's our process. The main idea is we're going to compute this, what's known as a 1 minus alpha confidence interval. And what we're going to produce, or what we're going to have to fill in is this, this little formula here. And we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more here in just a second. Notice I've got that plus minus in the middle. You can break that up into an interval. We'll just take x bar minus and then the x bar plus, as you can see right below. So let's simply talk about uh, computing this. And I've got a little diagram here that I think is worth understanding. So in this case, you know, if we do the 90% confidence interval, we want to capture 90% of the data in the middle, which means we're going to have 5% and 5% on the ends to make up the rest. That's how we're going to end up, uh, we're going to use that to compute this Z value is where that's going to relate. Let's talk about the formula real, real quick. Again, X bar, that's just going to be a sample average. We'll compute it. We just talked about what this Z value is. We're just going to look it up from a table. Again, sigma is given, the squared, or excuse me, n was given, that's our sample size. So really there's not a lot to compute other than the average and then to look up that, that z value in the table and then just be careful with your arithmetic. That's all you're doing in these examples. Okay, so I've got my little handy dandy recipe. You can check that out, but let's go ahead and, and uh, do one. It's just everything I just said we need to do. Well, let's compute our average. So I'm just adding up all of those times, right? I'm adding up all 32 of those times, dividing by 32. So it says that the average commute time based on that sample is 38.72 minutes. So far, so good. Now I need to compute this, the second term. Well, sigma was given, right? We just said that sigma was equal to 15. That's our standard deviation. We know that n was equal to 32. Let's not forget the square root. So I know the second factor. There's not much to do there. It's just dropping in the values that we had. And again, now to look up, uh, we just have to look up the z value from the table. So again, if we want 5% on either end, this is just, again, referring to a table often at the back of the book. It says the z value that goes with that 
says the Z value that goes with that, it says once you get to 1.645, once you get past that, uh, only 5% of the data is going to be left. So I take 1.645, multiply it by my standard deviation divided by the square root of n. I got this to be equal to 4.36. So if I fill in my formula, it says I'm going to have, this is going to be equal to x bar, which we said was equal to 38.72, plus or minus my 4.36. And if you do 38.72 uh, minus 4.36, lo and behold, that's where you get that lower number I gave the mayor of 34.26. And if you take 38.72 plus 4.36, um, you're going to get that upper value. And that upper value I said was 43.08. So that's where those numbers came from that I gave the mayor. I just used that formula that I just showed you. What if we want to be 99% uh, confident? There's only one little thing that changes in the computation, and the only thing that changes is going to be that z value. Now, I tried to illustrate it here, you know, just kind of giving you a, a, a graphical representation of what's going on. And the second one, I actually gave you a table of values, and this is useful. If this was me and I was taking the class, I would probably jot down this table somewhere in my notes, or at least I would know where to go find it quickly, because it will be useful. Okay, so it says if you want to have a 99% uh, confidence interval, it says that Z value is just 2.58. So that's all I've done. I've just replaced that Z value I had a second ago of 1.645. I've just now changed it to be 2.58 to be more confident. Nothing else changes in terms of the arithmetic there. So I got this to be roughly equal to 6.84. Same thing, I now just drop it into my formula. And again, you could write that as an interval, great. So now I've got my two confidence intervals. One little thing I wanna point out, I did use some rounding. There may be rounding errors if you use a calculator or a program, but my answers and your answers should be very, very close. 